Uh, we're going to go ahead and bring in Dick Morris, a political analyst with us now, also close advisor, former advisor to President Clinton. Uh, Dick, the CBO report, it's funny because we hear about, uh, you know, certain statistics from the CBO, and if you can use them to help tell your story, the CBO is great. It's, uh, you know, beyond reproach, their, their reputation is perfect, but if it doesn't support your, what you're trying to say, oh, yeah, the CBO, it's, it's politically motivated. But this is not good for the Obama administration, whether you get into the details of it or not. Well, when I worked for Clinton, we always fought with the CBO, and we were always right, and they were always wrong. But we never felt that there was a political motivation. I think the CBO sometimes makes mistakes, but I don't think it's biased. Um, the key thing in this report is that for the first time that I've seen, the, an official organ of government uh, is saying that policies that increase welfare benefits discourage people from working sounds very simple, but it's never been said before. Here they said that if you offer people health insurance subsidized, people are going to stay out of the workforce because they figure they can get health insurance anyway, and the, and the employers are going to cut back on hours and therefore the jobs will be so low that they won't enter. But that concept, that if you increase food stamps, increase uh, Medicaid, increase sec subsidized housing, increased Obamacare subsidies, you're going to discourage people from working. And don't forget, we've had 10 million people drop out of the workforce. Yeah, and one of the things we heard a lot while, while the Democrats are trying to sell this plan to us is, hey, look, if your health care is not tied to your, your job, it would make it easier for people to move about the workforce. The problem is those jobs never materialize, and now we see what happens. These people are going to leave the workforce. Exactly, and quit and leave. And what we have to understand is that the goal of the Obama presidency is to increase the number of Americans who receive means-tested welfare, increase the number of Americans who don't pay income tax, and decrease the number of Americans in the workforce. But that's, because but if this they can create a nation of dependents, of entitlement addicts, they'll perpetually dominate the process. Now, his name is on the legislation, the nickname of the legislation, but you know that President Obama is a, a, a two-year or three-year issue. This is not just his motivation. This is the new progressive wing of the right. party. Right. It's it's the effort of all leftist parties around the world, and until recently, it was not the effort of the Democratic Party. Uh, Bill Clinton did the exact opposite. He worked on cutting entitlement benefits. He repealed the welfare entitlement. But Clinton once told me, he said, "You know, Democrats and Republicans both agree on how to treat the poor." but they disagree about the middle class. The Democrats want to give the middle class entitlements to get the votes. The Republicans are afraid that if the Democrats do that, they'll never get, it, never get elected again. And, and that was an exact summary of what's going on now and what the CBO report predicts. Now, when you look at this, uh, you know, another Democratic uh, counterpoint to this would say, hey, there's a lot of people in the workforce right now who maybe have the financial means to retire, but they don't have the health care to do so. So let's, you know, they can hop out of the job force, and this maybe opens up some jobs for younger Americans, because we're talking about jobs here, not people, right? Well, first That's of all, we're talking say. about only people under 65. So, I mean, I, I know you like going fishing and retired at 40, but we're talking about relatively, for me, relatively <laughs> younger people. Uh, and secondly, the biggest impediment to those people retiring is the zero interest rate policy of this administration. For three years, they've guaranteed that if you sell your house and save for a whole lifetime and you have 200000 and you say, whoopee, I'm going to retire at 6 or 7% interest and I'm going to get 1000 a month to supplement Social Security, that ain't materializing because he has zero interest. Nothing could do more to discourage saving in retirement than that. Now, the White House and the President Obama's Board of Economic Advisors, they had a press conference about this yesterday. Oh God, and, I, that was so much and you fun. saw it. I saw I don't know if a lot of people saw it, but, Jason you know, Thurman. Jason Thurman. He said that uh, this bill gives people the choice uh, to not work uh, or to accept lower wages if they want to because their health insurance is taken away. I think he said they're making new choices subject to new constraints. But what we're not able to really portray here in this discussion, I wish we had the video prepared to play for everyone, is the how uncomfortable he was trying to explain everything in that uh, press conference. And it, it sounded like the closest thing to Jonathan Swift's modest proposal that the Irish are hungry, there are too many Irish, so <laughs> have the Irish eat their children. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was really uncomfortable. Uh, we'll, we'll try to get it in the show tomorrow, but you know, clearly the administration knew this was going to happen because they had a kind of a stock 
answer prepared, but they didn't seem to understand the totality well, of everything. Well, I think that what they knew was that they would say that this is costing jobs and that this is uh, going to add to the deficit. I don't think they realized that they would be saying that this would drive people out of the labor force, which is really, in the Clinton years, we were trying to bring them into the labor mm -hmm. force, and we did. But can I comment a little on Phyllis Schlafly? We, yeah, we'll get to comment? that. We'll, we'll okay. get to that. We have you around uh, for one more uh, break. But uh, before we okay. get to get back to Phyllis, um, let's talk about uh, this and how and what it means uh, for Democrats in 2014. President Obama meeting with Senate Democrats today at the White House, and uh, read one report that uh, President Clinton might be there to help mm -hmm. uh, explain things. This is something we've seen from this president calling on, uh, you know, yeah. yeah, calling in the cavalry, the the, the the chief of explaining things to yeah. come back in. Why do you think Obama would need Clinton's help talking to Senate Democrats right now? Well, first of all, it's kind of odd to ask Clinton, who lost the Senate in 94, how to keep the Senate this time. What did you learn, maybe, but questions? <laughs> well, I don't think the, the, the key thing was move to the center. The key thing is to jettison this Obamacare bill and work on changing it and reforming it and show people that they're learning and they're growing. Instead, the Democrats have dug in their heels on it. What's really happening? is the Democrats have decided that the way to keep seats is negative ads, just character assassination. My, I know you hate Democrats, I know you hate Obamacare, and I know you want change, but this guy I'm running against is a horse thief and a child rapist, and he, uh, and he kills dogs. Uh, you don't want him, and anybody else, but you don't want him. And their concept is really to run wall-to-wall -wall negative campaigns like Obama did against Romney. Never mentioned health care, never mentioned deficit spending, Obamacare, any of that. It was Bain Capital and outsourcing right. jobs. That was the whole deal. And that's what they're counting on now. The essence of President Clinton's approach to politics, which was also my own, is that you reposition on issues, that that's the way to win an election, not just by dumping negative ads on your opponents. Uh, one last question on this topic before we go to break and get to Phyllis Schlafly and, and what you wanted to say on immigration reform. Which red state Democrat in the Senate who's running for re-election, does this, this number hurt worse, the most? Well, I think it hurts the big four, Landro, Louisiana, yep. Pryor, Arkansas, Biggish, Alaska, and Hagen, North Carolina. Right. And I don't think it does anything for the health of Merkley and Oregon or um, one other I'm thinking of is Michigan and Franken in Minnesota. And, yeah, Franken, uh, okay. And, and I think that the, but, but, then, but basically, there are three empty seats the Republicans are certain to win, uh, Montana, South Dakota and West Virginia. Then you have the four I spoke of. Then you have about three in the background. And out of those 10, we have to win six. So I think we're in good shape. So the odds increasing for uh, Republicans, especially if more of this information comes out and more, uh, I'm sure, information to come, another shoe to drop on Obamacare. Right. Uh, we get well, I think the week. other shoe is, we, today it came out that cancer patients in California are being, finding they can't go to their doctors anymore. They're in the middle of chemo with a guy who may have saved sort their like life and they can't go back, like, like Coburn. Like Tom Coburn. We'll yeah. have more uh, on this. Dick Morris will be back with us again. Uh, America's Forum here on Newsmax TV continues right after this.